Hello, sailors. Welcome to Full Sail. Welcome to Creative Presentation. Hi, my name is Daryl. I'm your instructor this month, and I'm so happy to see you guys. This looks like a really good, positive group. So uh, this session is to get you oriented to what's going on, kind of take all the mystery out of what's, what's happening with online education, kind of ease the flow. So uh, today, what we're going to try to do is just uh, introduce you to uh, the system here, talk about what we're doing, we're asking you to do this uh, week. Uh, we'll talk about the reading, we have some assigned reading. We'll talk about a discussion, we have some writing that we want you to do. And we'll talk about the main assignment. We'll make sure we take all the mystery out of this. I'll be here to answer all your questions and show you some examples and uh, follow through with it. So, um, uh, online education has some difficulties. It's uh, important that you guys stay in touch, involved. You know, I'm going to try to be as in contact with you guys as I can, and I'm going to be as available as I can, but it comes an onus on you to uh, make sure that you're letting us know what's happening. Uh, so sometimes it can be lonely, but there are some uh, advantages to uh, online, uh, online education uh, because you're all by yourselves. Uh, you don't have to wear any masks. Um, so uh, this system that we're using now is called Zoom. Uh, I'm still a little bit new to it, so we're all going to kind of get familiar with it together. Uh, we've been using other business communication software. And I'm trying to deliver pretty much uh, that experience. Zoom is meant really for face-to-face -face communication. And what we're going to do here is kind of deliver a lecture. So you guys are looking at my desktop. I haven't turned on the video. Uh, I'll, I'll turn it on in a second. We, we, we will use some video, but we, don't, we won't, really won't rely on it much for this class. Basically, you guys are going to see my desktop and hear my voice. That's really the most useful way I can get through this. Uh, it, believe me, it, it's uh, no great thing to see my face, and uh, you're not going to gain a lot out of it. And by seeing my desktop, either I'll have prepared slides, or for the most part, we're going to dump out of that and go straight to the browser, and I will take you through um, each assignment live. And uh, we'll just have some hands-on help on and showing you what's going on and what's, what's happening. Now, with Zoom, uh, we have a number of different possibilities here. Uh, you, all, you should all have a microphone, and whether you're connected by a, a mobile device or uh, your computer, uh, if you've got a microphone, you should be able to be, uh, be able to speak. I have, by default, turned them all off. You know, we, it's, it's, it's confusing if uh, everybody has their own control of the audio. So as the uh, moderator here, I, I, I've set it all to be off. But I can unmute things, and we can, uh, we can talk to each other. We have ways of uh, asking for attention. You guys can sort of raise your hand. Uh, there's a, a, a tool there in, the, uh, in, in the, uh, the sidebar that lets you do that. And uh, you can turn on or off your video. I'm not asking anyone to turn on their video. I'm not going to make people be um, on camera if you don't want. Uh, however, your icon will always show. So uh, you may want to dress up your icon. You have the ability to put a still image there. You can see the still image for me, uh, and that's much more friendly than just the black page with the with the white type on it. So uh, I would encourage you guys to go into the uh, preferences and add an image. And then uh, by whenever you don't have the video on, the image will show as as your avatar rather than the video. Uh, and that's as much as I want you guys to customize it. Uh, if you're on a mobile version of Zoom, uh, maybe not every feature is going to be available. You should have audio. You should have video. Uh, you should be able to see my desktop. I don't know that you can see them all at the same time. Uh, on the computer, there are multiple windows and, and so forth. Um, so I'm going to start the video, and you guys can see me. Uh, I'm going to... Uh, uh, have the video panel on and uh, let's see there you are so you see you're not missing much I'm for the most part going to keep the video off uh, right now I want to tell you a little bit about myself uh, I've been involved in um, 
video production for about 30 years. I'm an old guy. You can see I'm actually an actual gray beard. Um, I've been teaching for the last 20 years or so. Uh, I, uh, I wrote books on video. I, uh, I produced films for the home video market and I got involved in computer software at a fairly early age. So I've been working with computers uh, since about the mid 80s and I know an awful lot about computers. I've been involved in online education uh, for about 20 years. When I first got started it was a very expensive thing and we were only doing it for uh, corporate clients like lawyers and uh, pharmaceutical agencies and so forth. Um, somewhere in the mid 2000s uh, I got a call from Full Sail. They asked me to come down and join their team and I was teaching digital video for about 10 years. About two or three years ago, I joined the creative presentation team. This is the team that teaches the very first class to all incoming students, no matter what you're taking, no matter what your major is, you take creative presentation as your intro class. Uh, it's an oral communications class, meaning it talks, it, we're going to be able to express our opinions, but it's really a multimedia class. It's about how to express yourself in modern media. So making presentations, uh, telling, you're giving your point of view by telling a story, by putting that story into a form that is uh, amplified by multimedia. And uh, because this is a, a, a month one class, you know, we're not gonna teach you in depth any particular program. I know you guys are all sort of modern people and you, uh, by virtue of owning a smartphone, you're already communicating multimedia. So we're going to try to work with the elements that you know to complete all of our assignments. I know you're all anxiously waiting for these uh, LaunchBox uh, uh, supercomputers that are gonna land in your, your laps. That's not gonna happen for another four months. Some of you may be getting iPads, and that'll happen in month two, but for, the month, for this month, you're gonna have to work with what gear you have, and I'm going to be there to help you make that happen. So um, I really like working with students. I really like answering questions. You guys may think that that uh, makes me crazy, but uh, I like to make myself available. To that end, I'm giving you my cell phone number. You see that it's published here. It, you got it in the uh, intro uh, message that you got from me. Uh, I, I'm, I'm giving you that primarily so that you can text me anytime you want. You can message me on the system. I think you guys already know some of the specifics of how the FSO platform works. And if you message me on the system, I'll probably see that message within um, uh, a half hour or an hour or so, and I will try to get back to you. But that's not really synchronous communication. So if you guys really want an instant answer, feel free to text me. Uh, you can text me almost any time. I've always got my phone with me, and I don't consider uh, an inconvenience to be getting a text. You can call me as well. Be a little more judicious in calling me. I'll answer a text in the middle of the night. I won't answer the phone in the middle of the night or talk on the phone. Uh, but I'm happy for you to call me anytime you want. You're not bothering me. That's why I'm here. So uh, I, I get energized by students. I'm an old guy. Uh, I'm not going to make any bones about that. I'm not hip anymore. I know what you guys are into. I know all the, the latest uh, media and so forth. Uh, but if you're asking for my choices, you know, you're going to find that I'm an old school guy. I like the talking heads and rocks music and, uh, you know, spore and anything that happened before the turn of the century. Um, and so that's who I am. Now I want to try to find out who you guys are. So uh, we're going to try to get a little bit interactive here. And uh, I'm going to call on people. And I hope we don't have too many people. Well, we're up to 26. So we're going to make this voluntary. If, uh, if you go to the tools section, uh, there, there is a, uh, uh, okay, uh, in the more section uh, uh, on the toolbar, there's a hand that can be raised up. And if you raise your hand, I can call on you. So anybody that is uh, wanting to speak, uh, request a uh, microphone and I will go through the tools. So I'm gonna go down the list here, and if nobody volunteers, I'm just gonna start calling people at random. But uh, I'm gonna ask you four questions, and I'm gonna give you 15 seconds to answer. 
Now, this is not a terrible pop quiz. Uh, I'm going to give you the questions ahead of time. You can think about it. And it isn't really going to be uh, very, very tough. Uh, here are the four questions. What is your name? Where are you from? And uh, uh, what are you here to study? We have people from all over the country here. Sometimes people from out, out of the country. Uh, we have people from all different degrees mixed in together. Uh, that's a special feature of the first four classes. So you want to take advantage of networking with folks that you may never get to see again if, once you get into your specific degrees. And then finally, I want you to give me two words that describe your professional vision. So you want you to, want you to kind of self-describe yourself with, with two words, a kind of Rorschach. So uh, I'm just going to go down the roll here and uh, try to do this. If you don't have a microphone or you're not able to it or you're too shy, you can also answer the question in the chat box. We have a chat box. If, if you don't have that open, you can open that. But uh, that's another way that we can communicate here. So you can, you can ask questions and you can make comments that way as well by typing in the chat box. But I'm going to call on Courtney Griffin. Yes, I'm here. All right. And uh, you, your time is up. Go. Okay. My name is Courtney Griffin. I'm from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. I'm studying music business. Two words that describe my professional vision is determined and hardworking. Excellent. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Alyssa Molino. Mm -hmm. Hi. Hi. Mm -hmm. Alyssa, are you there? Yeah, I try to unmute myself. Is it working? Yeah, it's fine. Okay, my name is Alisa Molina. I'm from Chesapeake, Virginia, and I'm studying media communications. Um, and two words to describe my professional vision would be, uh, I don't know, I, I would say creative. I don't really know another word. I just like being creative, so in any capacity that I can. Okay. All right, this next name is beautiful, but it's going to destroy me. Anastasia Faye Lacal. Most people just call me Faye. Hi, Faye. <laughs> you ready? I have issues with my everything went down, so I'm not sure what the question was. Uh, they're on the screen. Can you see the screen? Uh, w yes, but which question are you on? Well, one, two, three. Okay. Um, I'm in Utah. I'm studying a bachelor's in science with emphasis on game design um, and professional vision would be uh, owner. <laughs> I don't we want to own our own, so. Entrepreneur, how was that? Yeah, that works. Okay, thanks. Uh, Alyssa Molino. Yes. You ready to go? Yeah, I just went, you didn't hear me? Oh. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm getting, I'm getting a little out of sorts here. The, uh, this, the list puts you in alphabetical order, but when I select you, it switches the order, so it's, Oh, it's messing with my mind. Uh, Benjamin Wolf. Hello. Hi. Hi. So I'm Benjamin Wolf. I'm from Lebanon, Pennsylvania. I am studying uh, computer animation. And I just like to work for an animation studio. Okay. We're not looking for your in goal, we're looking for your professional vision. Just describe yourself. Like, what do you just, like? What kind of person are you? What, what, what adjective would someone say about you? Uh, a go-getter. Go-getter, excellent. So, you know, you want to say wacky or, or thoughtful <laughs> or, or uh, you know, vicious. And, Maybe a bit vicious. All right. We want vicious go-getters around here to take <laughs> over the world. Uh, Dalton Morris. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, you sound good. Perfect. 
Uh, yeah, I'm Dalton Morris. Uh, I'm originally from Bradenton, Florida, but I'm currently living in Seattle. Awesome. I'm studying computer animation. Uh, two words that describe. Uh, I'd say hardworking and I'm really motivated. Excellent. Eric Jones. Eric, are you there? Um, they wrote it in the chat. Okay, I see it there. Eric Jones is from West Palm Beach. He's studying Cal computer animation. His two words are creative and ambitious. Thank you, Eric. Um, sorry, I missed that. Uh, Eric Steinborn. My name is Eric Steinborn. I'm from Ohio. I'm studying music production. And the way I describe myself is wild and musically. Excellent. Jacob Rourke. Uh, name is Jake Rourke. I'm from Washington, but I'm actually taking this class in Virginia right now. I'm studying game development, and I guess two words to describe my professional vision would be uh, originality and trippy. Good words. Uh, Johnny Torres. Oh, look, can you hear me? Yeah. Hello, everybody. My name's Johnny. I am originally from Puerto Rico, but I currently residing in Orlando, Florida. I'm studying information technology, and two words that describe my professional vision are ambitious and uh, resilient. Excellent. Luke Thiel. Luke, are you there? No, not everything works. Uh, Matthew Swift. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Go ahead, Matthew. Hello? Sorry, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm Matthew Swift. I am uh, currently living in uh, Rockledge, Florida, close to Orlando. I'm studying for a bachelor's in game art, and uh, two words that would describe my professional vision would be uh, creative and innovative. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, Michael Lancaster. Hello. Hi. Uh, my name is Michael Lancaster, and uh, I live in Sonoma County. I am studying game design, and two words that describe me are adventurous and hungry. Excellent. Like your picture there. Thank you. Patrick. No last name given. Anybody? Okay, let's go on. Remington Hartman. All right, am I ready to go? Yes. All right, my name is Remington Hartman. I'm from Houston, Texas. I'm studying game design, and my professional vision would probably be described as precise and direct. Excellent. Those are nice, specific words. Uh, Shanice Digout. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, my name is Shanice Digout. Um, I'm from New York. I'm studying media communications. Um, two words would be hungry and creative. Excellent. Stephen Tolley. No one. Uh, Stephen Vandeviver. Hi, I'm Stephen Vandiver, and um, you're not the first to mess that up. Um, Originally from Bolivar, Tennessee, I'm currently living in La Junta, Colorado. I'm studying digital cinematography, and best two words to describe my professional vision is techie preacher. Techie preacher, excellent. And finally, uh, Taylor Linyard.
Hello? Yes. You can hear me? Yes. Ah, hello. Uh, my name is uh, Taylor Linyard. I'm calling in from uh, Pollock Pines, California. I am studying creative writing, and two words that describe my professional vision are varied and comedic. Varied and comedic, like that. Um, Dominic Barker. You there, Dominic? Uh, in, in chat, he says he's from Illinois. He's studying digital cinema. He's an overachiever with precision. Excellent. So if I missed anybody, I apologize. If I missed you, you can, you can type your uh, name in chat, uh, but we're gonna move on. That was enough of that uh, fun stuff there. Uh, let me hide the video panel so that it's not in the recording anymore and move on. All right, so what do we expect from you guys? Well, we don't expect you to come in knowing everything fully. We're coming in asking you to make presentations. We're coming in asking you to make multimedia. And we don't expect you to be polished cinematographers or audio guys, but we're gonna ask you to make video. We're gonna ask you to, to record your voice. Uh, we're gonna give you help with all of that. And we're gonna use tools that you know how to use. Uh, the, the smartphone has sort of changed everything for everybody. It's made everybody into uh, somewhat of a multimedia maker. So uh, there are programs that are specific to a lot of these fields that are in depth. Uh, we're not asking anybody to, to know those things. If you know how to use them, if you know how to use Pro Tools or you know how to use uh, Final Cut Pro to edit video, uh, feel free to use those things. But if you've never used them before, we don't want you taking on programs that you've never used. Um, we're gonna talk a lot about PowerPoint here. We're gonna say good and bad things about it. Uh, if, you're, if you've never used PowerPoint, you don't feel like you have to use it. It's a complicated program with an awful lot of options. So while it's a very good program to use, it's sometimes kind of complicated to start without any help. And there are alternatives, so we'll give you alternatives for that. But uh, So we're not expecting you to come in fully formed. What we are expecting you to do is to participate, to ask questions about the assignments, and to give us your best shot at things. This class is looking for your opinions, it's looking for your ideas, it wants to know uh, um, not what you can do, but how you can do it or what you're willing to try to do. We're, we're, we're uh, wanting sincere answers here. We're wanting uh, efforts at attempting these tools that you're gonna work on in future classes. So we want you to come in and we want you to participate. And when you don't understand something, we want you to ask questions because we are going to provide you with all the help that you need. We're not gonna, we're not gonna leave you swamped and buried in having to do this stuff on your own. But with a lot of students, you have to come in and ask for help. I can't always find, uh, you know, I, I can't see the absences. I can't say, oh, I haven't heard from so-and-so, I better call them. Uh, keeping track of the flock uh, is mostly answering the messages and, and, and uh, uh, um, responses that I get. So if you do not step forward and ask for help, it's going to be very hard for me to offer it. So what do we expect from students? We expect you to, to let us know, to ask for help, to stay engaged. Um, do not be passive aggressive about this. If I haven't come to you, uh, it's not because I'm ignoring you, it's because I'm answering a fire somewhere else. And if you do need help, uh, you've paid for this, you, you deserve help and you will get it, but you have to ask for it. So we want you to come in, we want you to have an open mind, we want you to, to, to give us your best shot at these lessons. Some of this activity we're gonna ask you to do is stuff you may not be familiar with working in. I mean, if you were at a school where they, they, they had you follow specific directions to make something cookie cutter ahead of time. That's not the way it works here at Full Sail. We, uh, we like what we, something call, we call problem-based learning, which means we just give you a sort of vague goal and say, figure out how to get there. 
and the learning is in the doing and that's the fun as well. So we want you to have fun with these assignments. If you're not having fun this month, you aren't doing this class right. Uh, we, we have really great assignments that you, have, that you should have an awful lot of fun and being creative in doing. But a lot of the parts you have to figure out. And if you can't figure it out on your own, come to us and we'll help you figure that out. But it's, it's not like you're following a recipe. We'll, we'll give you a lot of help. We'll give you a lot of examples. But you're going to end up starting with a blank canvas and figuring out how to, how to fill it. That's the, that's the problem with every artist and uh, you're all gonna have those problems. So if you stay in touch with us, we'll make sure you get through. So what do you should guys expect from us? Well, you shouldn't expect us to give you the answers. I'm gonna be on the sidelines and I'm gonna point you in a lot of directions. I'm gonna, I'm gonna suggest tools to you. I'm gonna suggest solutions. If it's a technical problem, our tech support or I will try to take it out of your hands. You shouldn't be responsible for that kind of stuff. But in terms of figuring out what to do, uh, you have to make a lot of your decisions. Our, our assignments are set up in such a way that a lot of the crucial decisions about what the assignment is going to be is something that you figure out, which means to some degree you're setting your own problems. And that's what makes the assignments interesting because for each one of you, you're going to be doing a different solution. It's not like you could actually you know, steal your neighbor's homework and turn it in because each one of you is making something specific to whom you are. And that's what also makes the assignment valuable. So you should expect me to be available. I am going to be available. I'm gonna make my best attempt to, to be around to answer your questions whenever you have it. And because all the assignments are built on top of each other, uh, assignments open up on a Monday, they close on a, on a Sunday, they build week to week. So the stuff that you did in week one is gonna be uh, a preliminary to getting things done in week two. And the stuff you do in week two is absolutely crucial to getting stuff done in week three. And therefore, when you turn in your homework on Sunday, it's important for you to get feedback as soon as possible. So what you should expect from me is timely grading. Now, the full sale policy on grading is that if you turn it in by a Sunday, it's gonna be graded by that Friday. That's not near enough good, for, good enough for our department. Our department rule is if you turn it in by Sunday, it's gonna be graded by Wednesday. But that's even not good enough for me. My personal goal is that you're gonna get your homework back on Monday, and at the worst, you're gonna get it back on Tuesday if, if I've got something going on Monday that blows out my schedule. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, uh, really aiming to get feedback back to you in a hurry so that you're aware of what you've done and you can use that going forward. So uh, those are the, some of the things you should be able to expect from your teacher. And uh, you know, that's just our relationship. So if you haven't gotten your grade back soon enough to suit you, get a hold of me. You have a right to ask for it. Uh, professionalism. This is something most of you probably clicked through earlier in the day. You were going through that preliminary section where you know, there's sort of general stuff before you got to the week one activities. And professionalism was in there. It pointed you to the uh, school manual. But I don't know if you noticed, this is actually 10% of your grade this month. Uh, and that's because the full sale system is that we're not just training you with a particular skill and leaving you to your own devices. We're training you to become a working professional in the creative world. So professionalism is a part of that. Um, we're not just teaching you an abstract skill. We're teaching you what the industry needs, wants, expects, and demands. And the way we are going to do that is we're going to treat you like an industry professional as you go along. And we expect you to treat everyone else that way. It means you're going to treat all your classmates as colleagues, equal colleagues with respect. It means, you know, when we have deadlines, they're like deadlines at work. You better meet them. If you don't meet them, there are consequences. You have to be truthful to your word. And when you don't, uh, then there are issues. So professionalism is our way of making sure that you're staying in that positive mode throughout as you go to school. And so to that extent, when you click the I've done this at the uh, beginning of the month, you get a full 100%. But as you go through the month, if you miss an assignment or you're late on an assignment or you say you'll do something, and you don't do it, or you're rude to someone in a chat box, or you're otherwise uh, acting in a less professional manner, 
then those are things that can ding your professionalism. We, we take out uh, unprofessional behavior out on this grade. Now for the first month, usually never hardly ever affects grade month one students. You guys are so jazzed to be here. You're so excited that you're, uh, you're forgetting to be rude. But believe me, six, eight months in, people can start to get cranky. But you shouldn't ever take that out on others. And we make sure that you don't. So professionalism keeps you acting like a working professional. And believe me, by the end of, the, uh, of your term here, by the time you graduate, you will be the kind of person that people in the industry want to hire. The kind of person who always shows up on time, the kind of person who's always chill, cheerful, helps everybody, volunteers, the kind of people you want to hire. So that's enough about professionalism. Um, the reading. We have two books uh, for this class. And uh, we have to make sure everybody has access to those books. Uh, your access to these books is through a third party website called O'Reilly. O'Reilly is a, um, uh, an online library that uh, deals with creative arts. Anything in the creative arts, audio, video, photography, uh, graphic design, game design, uh, lots of other things. Uh, and they have a library of over 100,000 books. So we have given you all subscription to that for the life of your time here at school. And your school credentials, your school email and your school password have been linked so that that should be how you get there, how you get into the website. So sh you should never go directly to the O'Reilly website and try to get in because they won't recognize you and they'll ask you for a credit card or something like that. But if you go in through the full sale links, coming, meaning that you're either coming in through full sale one, which is the portal that leads you to our class, or from our class pages, that should pass your school credentials along and work just fine. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna dump out of here real quick and show you what I'm talking about. Um, so here are our activities for the, this week. And um, if you, the 1.2 activities is the reading. We want you to read five chapters in the book Resonate this week. So we want you to read chapters one, two, three, four, and seven. And here is a link straight through to Resonate. And so if I click on it, my credentials take me to the Resonate homepage on the O'Reilly book site. So my school credentials linked me through to this other site. I'm at the front of this book. I'm at the table of contents. So if I wanna to go to chapter one, I only need to click here. Chapter two is here, chapter three, four, and seven. So you can get to the entire book here and you're reading it on the website. So um, this is uh, really helpful to those of you who have computers and have broadband uh, access. And this is part of why the school, when they're asking you, you know, are you prepared to go to school, they ask for broadband access because you wanna have uh, like a permanent connection that's not counting off your time or data or whatnot uh, when you're reading a book online. Um, now we know an awful lot of you are using your phones and uh, that eats through cellular data, and you really don't want to be reading a book on cellular data. It's just eating your data for uh, poor reasons. But um, the O'Reilly has uh, the O'Reilly website has a mobile app. Unfortunately, that mobile app does not work with the books that we are using in our class. So we want you not to use the O'Reilly mobile app. If you're on a phone, use the browser in your phone and go to the O'Reilly website. Now, I realize that these pages have been laid out from computers. They're big and wide. They have nice pictures, but they all only look good on a computer. And that on a, on a phone, it becomes really, di really difficult. What you can do when you log in to the O'Reilly site on the browser through the credentials is come forward to the front page of the O'Reilly site, go down to the bottom and the links down here, uh, there are links that take you to a mobile version of the site. Uh, I think we also have link those links on our pages as well. So if I came back here, um, we don't have the mobile version linked in. Uh, 
I will make sure that the, that list is, is put in an announcement. So anybody who wants to read the, the sort of lightweight version for your phone, uh, it still is online, but it, it, it takes less data. So uh, I apologize that uh, we can't get you the offline reading. You should be able to it, uh, do it, and most of O'Reilly books are available that way, but the books that we've asked for uh, are not, and that's, um, that's an issue between us and O'Reilly, and, and we, will, we will beat it into their heads until they give us what we want because we're paying them pretty good money, and uh, you guys deserve that. But this is the reading we want you to do. There's two books uh, from Safari. It's called Re a book called Resonate and Slideology. Both books have been written by Nancy Duarte. Now, who's Nancy Duarte? She is a graphic designer. And uh, she basically was living the life of a graphic designer. She was going to presentation meetings and she was going to business meetings and, and whatnot. Uh, and every time she would go into a meeting and she'd be in with a bunch of really creative people that she knew everyone in that room could make great art. She found that every time she'd be in a business meeting, people would be running PowerPoint and they'd just be running these really bad PowerPoints, full of text, full of bullet points, full of cheap clip art straight out of PowerPoint. I don't know why it is that everyone seems to want to turn off their brain when they use PowerPoint, but she was frustrated that she was in a room full of, of creative graphic people and they were using such crappy slides. So she wrote the book, slideology as a way of, of telling designers these are the kinds of slides that you should make in presentations and that book was a huge hit there was a really need in the marketplace for people who wanted to make better presentations but when she put out slideology she realized she'd only told half the story that slideology is a book about how to make better slides and there were a lot of things about making presentations that people didn't know or didn't even think about so the second book she wrote is called Resonate, and that completes the story. It's about the full process of making a creative presentation. And um, so we're gonna read a, pretty much all of Resonate. We'll read a few chapters in, in Slideology, but uh, we want you to take to heart Nancy Duarte's notions of what makes multimedia work and what makes a good presentation. And specifically, uh, um, there's no way of getting around it. Uh, we, we, we tend to use PowerPoint a lot here, mixing it up with meaning presentation. For the most part, I'm gonna be very careful and try to say the word presentation. Sometimes I'll say PowerPoint and I mean generally presentation. You're gonna find that we both um, kick PowerPoint like a dog and we pet PowerPoint like a dog. PowerPoint is great, fantastic software that produces awful, awful results because people use it wrong. And so one of the things we wanna clear everybody up of is stop using PowerPoint wrong. And the big, um, the big secret of that is that people start their presentations by using PowerPoint. PowerPoint is to make slides. And you should never make slides first. Slides are the last aspect of making a presentation. Uh, if you've ever used PowerPoint, uh, if someone assigned you to make a presentation and you went straight to PowerPoint thinking PowerPoint's gonna build the entire presentation, uh, what happens when you click on PowerPoint? Uh, you get a template asking you to pick uh, um, a style. So you choose a background pattern and some fonts and colors and whatnot. And once you've chosen that, it dumps you into slide one and, you're, and uh, you're looking at the title slide and suddenly it's saying, feed me. And before you've thought about anything, you just open the program up. PowerPoint is there saying, hey, tell me the title. And so you just start typing just because the program asks you to. And you probably haven't figured any of that stuff out ahead of time yet. And so I'm going to say to everybody that the trick to doing a good presentation is to open PowerPoint last. Do not open PowerPoint until you've figured out all the particulars of what your presentation is going to be. Who you're talking to, what you're talking about, what you're going to say, having your full narrative put together ahead of time. 
do not make slides and then talk to that. You're going to make your entire talk and then you make slides to the presentation, to the, to the or, oration or the narrative. And that's the secret. Instead of PowerPoint being uh, the, the tail wagging the dog, you want to be a good boy and do everything in the proper order. We're gonna learn uh, you know, pre-production, production, and post for making presentations. And believe me, it matters. And once you get your work habits down right, you can just go forward and do presentation after presentation. And when I say presentation, please don't limit it to thinking PowerPoint because for the most part, we're talking video here. Uh, most of the presentations you're ever going to deal with are on YouTube. Those are all videos. And yet they are presentations. The presentation is you putting forth your point of view in a specific targeted way and supporting it with multimedia. And there are a number of different styles and ways to do it. We're gonna work through that. We're gonna learn the range of things and we're gonna learn the rules of what makes a good presenter a good presentation. And a lot of that you're gonna find in these first four chapters of Resonate chapter seven. So I want you to get the reading done. This is your first task early in the week. So uh, someone asked me earlier when we started the class, should I take notes? And yes, you can take notes if you like, but what I'd like to make sure everybody does as part of this presentation right now is that you make yourself a to-do list for the week. That's really why we're doing these lectures on this first day, is to get everybody started. And everybody, the thing about online education is you're all setting your own path. You all have your own work hours. You all have your own very complicated lives. Some of you have jobs, some of you have two jobs, some of you are watching your kids, some of you are in the army. You know, uh, I know that your lives are complicated and that none of you are gonna have this, a schedule like anyone else. So you have to make your own schedule. But start by making a to-do list of the order of operations for the things to get done. So I'd like you to start the reading first. Whether you finish it all before you start anything else, it's up to you. Uh, sometimes you can get all the reading done in, in one batch. Uh, I've heard tell that chapter two tends to drag on a little bit, so you may wanna give yourself a break and read this thing in sections over two, day, two or three days. But in this first couple of days, this first part of the week, try to get the reading done. The discussion board post, first post is due on Wednesday. So that's the second thing you wanna get done. And the main assignment, the thing that's gonna take most of your time this week, is the thing that you should do last. You need to get all of the reading done and have that as a base before you start the main assignment 1.4. And that is something where we're gonna look at a whole lot of presentations and this week's main assignment is a written assignment. It's not a piece of multimedia. You're gonna write a, a document, you're gonna write a review. Uh, and it's not due until Sunday. So there's no extra points for turning things in early. I want you to pace yourself throughout the week and get things done order in order. And that order means start with the reading uh, as soon as possible and get to, try to get that done in the first half of the week so that you're not playing catch up with that at all. So Nancy named her second book Resonate because it's a sound term. And what resonance is, is when you speak, the sound waves come out of your voice, out of your mouth, and hit the world. And depending on what the what's in the world, they hit surfaces and come back. They hit the wall and bounce back. They hit the table and bounce back. The bouncing back is the resonance. And so Nancy's mind, your presentation doesn't make, isn't worth a damn if nobody hears it, if nobody reacts to it. It's all about impacting the people that you talk to. So, she wants you to be resonant. She wants you to know who you're trying to aim this message at, and she wants you to get an effect out of it. Uh, and it's because this is the way the world works. Uh, nowadays, you know, in the old days, if there was a problem, you know, the, the vice president of the company might assign someone to research something and write a, a white paper, and it would be 60 pages long with footnotes, and it would get filed, and the decision you would have made in six months. Well, the world doesn't work that way anymore. The world 
works so fast that you have to make decisions made in two or three days. You don't have a whole lot of time to work things down. So if there's a problem in a company, um, you're going to take five, six, seven, or eight of the, of the right people, put them in a conference room for an hour, and that decision will get made. And in order for that decision to be set up, usually someone's going to start that meeting off with a short presentation. And that presentation shouldn't be filled full of junk to make you look like you're smart. It needs to be short and to the point. So one other thing that I want you to learn is that presentations are only useful if they're short and targeted. We don't want you to pad these things up. I mean, I know you were all given papers to write in high school and they said, make it nine pages or make it 12 pages. So then you added all kinds of extra junk just so that you, you could get in there. A presentation, the shorter it is, the better. And that means that if it's short, it means it's concise. It cuts right to the point. And it should only deal with one thing. If, you're, if you've got too many things going on in a presentation, then you, you, you haven't set it up right. It should maybe be a couple of presentations, but each presentation cuts right to the point, clarifies the issues for people, and uh, allows people to have a very focused conversation on whatever the problem is. So that's why presentations are good, that they clarify the mind, that they're, they're short and they're smart and they're sharp. And the only way they work is if people are interested in them. They, they don't want you just to list off a bunch of facts. They don't want you to read miscellaneous items off of, bull, of, of bullet points in PowerPoint. They want you to tell them something that, that makes sense and that they want to hear. Industry and the arts thrive on change. People want to know what are the solutions, what are we doing, where are we going. And so the whole point is that presentations have to have an impact. If they're boring, no one's going to listen. If they're boring, no one will remember it. It won't have done any good. It's just waste of media time and a waste of your voice. So for a presentation to be effective, you need to tell a story. Facts alone don't make for an engaging presentation. If you just tell someone a list of facts and don't connect them together, they're never going to remember it. But if you take those same facts and put a context together, a good story is the basis of all presentations. So these stories don't have to be fiction. These stories can be about, you know, what are we gonna do to make level three of our video game uh, more exciting? Uh, you know, what do we wanna put on the album cover this week? Uh, it can be something that needs to be decided, but it needs to be put together in a context with a story so that people will remember. They won't just have a bunch of isolated facts. And storytelling is something that we have been doing among humans for a long, long time now. Something like 70 to 100,000 years. And in the old days, and I mean the really old, old days, People's literal survival depended on it. The storyteller would gather around the fire and he would tell us about important things that we needed to know about, things that were life and death. And if you didn't learn these things, then it was going to be, you wouldn't be part of the crew anymore. And so they would gather around the campfire and the storyteller would tell you the things that you needed to know in the story form with multimedia and drama, and it would have an impact. Multimedia, meaning adding drama, adding visuals, adding audio, adding emotion and energy and passion to your story is what helps people remember what you have to say. This isn't fluff. This isn't adding to it. This is creating a a story context so that people actually remember it. We've done studies and if you just give people facts, it sticks in one or two parts of the brain, but when they try to remember them back, they don't connect because they haven't really been embedded properly where those synapses can, can reconnect. But when you tell people information with a story, with multimedia, with drama, it lands in several different parts of the brain and when they try to remember it, it comes with full recall because those extra sensory points help us to remember. And that's why it's important 
to tell us things in a story so that people are actually engaged and they actually remember what you have to say. So what do we need to tell a story? I think you guys already know this. Um, it, it sounds simplistic, but the basic elements are beginning, middle, and end. Whatever it is that you have to say, you have to tell it in a form in which you're laying out the issues, you're introducing the subject matter to people. That's the beginning. You're taking us through the complications or the changes. That's the middle. And you're leading us to a conclusion. That's the end. Some Often we call the end the takeaway in a presentation. And so that form of whatever you have to say, tell us what the lay of the land is, tell us what the complications are, tell us the good and the bad about each, and then lead us to possible solutions or the, the, the choice that you have. Uh, that's the form that we want storytelling to make, take. And we're gonna learn how to do that for anything we want. And then additionally, Nancy Duarte has very definite ideas about what kind of slides, what kind of images stay with and have impact on people. You can have text on the screen when you need it. And you can have images on the screen when you need it. The thing about images or text alone is that they can sometimes uh, be open to interpretation. And you may have very specific meanings that you want to control. So as the artist, as the creator of a presentation, you want to be as specific as you can with your audience so that they take away the meaning that you are imparting. So let me give you an, an example. Nancy Duarte um, likes a combination of, of quoter text and image so that each one kind of colors or affects the other. Here's a quote. Education is the kindling of a flame, not the filling of a vessel, Socrates. So this is as blank as it can be. It's black text on a white background. I'm not giving you any text for interpreting what this quote means. All you have are the words themselves. So we could be talking about education through the ages. We could be talking about education in the here and now, or you know, any kind of different context of education. It's clear, you know, what it means, but it doesn't necessarily mean tell you exactly what it applies to. You can see that that it attributed to Socrates, and if you know who Socrates is, ancient Greek who lived three thousand years ago, then you know it's an old quote as well, which sometimes makes you think that maybe it doesn't apply to the here and now. But if you were to take this quote and combine it with an image, then that the combination of the two, the image would color the interpretation of the quote and vice versa. And so if I wanted you to think about not education through the ages, but education in the here and now, kind of urgency of the now, the current generations, as, you know, uh, social sciences and so forth. I might take an image of young kids in the third world and they're an underpass teaching themselves and combine them with this quote. And now you're not thinking about education through the ages. You're thinking about modern education. Right now, the problem of education in the world today, this image has colored the way that you think about this quote. It's indelible. You cannot stop. I mean, I'm not emphasizing Socrates or 3,000 years old here. I'm telling you, this is the here and now. But maybe I do mean it the other way. Maybe I do want you to focus on education through the ages and, and it's important that it says quote from Socrates. In that regard, I might combine the quote with a Renaissance painting of Socrates. And now you are thinking in a more lofty fashion. I have changed the way you think about the quote because the image colors your interpretation. And that's your job as an artist to pick the image, to go with the quote, to give the meaning that you want your audience to interpret. That's a, that's a pretty sophisticated task. And that's your task, that's your job as a creative presenter. You're, you're not only providing the quote, you're providing the way that we interpret it. Now, most of this task isn't just about the meaning itself, but it's about reaching the audience. You're gonna hear many, many times from Nancy Duarte and me that the audience, 
that you are talking to is the most important decision you're making in making a presentation. We don't make generic presentations. We make presentations to influence a specific audience. And so knowing who we're talking to matters most of all. So in this regard, if I think about you guys, I don't think that you're really concerned about Socrates. I don't think you're really concerned necessarily about third world education. Uh, you're you're uh, Americans ensconced in pop culture. So if you want to weigh into this quote, uh, I've got to figure out you know what that hook could be. Well, uh, is there a pop culture connection to Socrates? The only one that I can think of is uh, a movie from the 90s called Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure in which the character Socrates was there. So maybe if I take a clip from that movie, I'm making a connection between me and my audience because I know my audience is into Bill and Ted. At least you guys sh should still be into Keanu Reeves. He's also John Wick. Uh, Bill and Ted's a movie from the 90s, so I'm not sure all of you know it, but you know, Netflix is around and it's an excellent movie. So uh, cultural references are one of the most important ways you're gonna connect with your audience. Knowing who you're talking to. Now this is, this is a, a, a dicey thing. You've got to know who you're talking to. If I put in T Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure and I was talking to the Council of Educators, I would have blown it. They would have preferred the, photo, uh, the, the painting of Socrates. But if I'm talking to people who are into pop culture, this is how I get them. And when your audience is people who are video gamers, maybe you don't want movie clips, maybe you want game clips, game art. So thinking of who your audience is tells you how you're going to choose the art that goes with and colors the quote. But there's no doubt that this image changes the way you think about the quote. And that's an important decision that you're making as an artist. And these are the kinds of things we're gonna think about this month. We're gonna all be creative presenters. We're all gonna be artists making these presentations and we're gonna think through the ramifications of these decisions. Now, is this something you just slap together when PowerPoint opens his mouth and says, feed me? No, these are things you have to think about ahead of time. We want you to plan your presentations. You're gonna to have to figure out who your audience is. You're gonna to have to figure out how do I relate to that audience? What is the art that they want to see? What is the story that they need to hear? And so forth. You're making uh, specialized media for the audience that you have in mind. And that's your job. And so you're taking all these people on a journey. They're gonna run and go through the story. Now, most of you have probably heard a lot of this theory of storytelling by Joseph uh, Campbell, you know, the hero goes on a journey. And so when you're telling your audience the story, you may think you're standing up in front of them being the hero. That even You might even be talking about your own life and telling them your life story. But in this relationship, you're not the hero. The audience is. When you are a storyteller, when you get up and present, you're trying to more or less create a movie in the back of the mind of every person in the audience. If you're doing it right, you're making a presentation in which each person in the audience imagine, hears your words and imagines it's happening to them. That they are creating a movie on the back of, in the back of their mind based on what you're telling them. That means that the language you, you use needs to be active verb language. You know, you need to talk in such a way that they can imagine themselves going through this. And in terms of storytelling lore, there's actually a, um, uh, a term for this. The, the person who take, uh, takes the hero and initiates him on his journey is called the mentor. So in relationship to the audience, you as the storyteller, as you spin the story and you get them to engage in the um, elements that you're talking about, you are their mentor. You are taking them along on their journey. Now, you don't take them all the way on the journey. You lead them. You initiate them in. You, 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 when you do the beginning and the middle, you're, you're, you're introducing them to the complications. 
and you lead them to the takeaway. So the audience ends up having their own conclusion, but that conclusion is the end of the story that you initiated them on. And that's your job. When you tell a story, you've got to engage these people. You've got to make them start to think about what you're talking about, imagining it happening to them, engaging with the material. And that's the job of the mentor. That's your job as the storyteller. When you do this, you end up taking your audience on a journey. And that's a very special thing. That is your job as the media presenter. So we're going to learn how to do this. We're going to learn how to take any kind of thing that we have to say and turn it into a story. We're going to learn how to target our audience. We're going to learn how to specify the media that we're going to use to make the, your, your words come alive and be drama. We're going to use our words to do that. So this is an oral communication class. I want everybody to realize you know, this is not a live class, so you're not going to have to present live to your classmates. That, uh, that bit of stress is taken away. But we are going to have everyone, by the end of this month, record their voice and tell their story attached to multimedia that runs by itself. So you won't be there live, but you're going to actually have to use your voice to talk, and we're going to get everybody through that. So that's part of what we have to deal with. So uh, that's what we're trying to accomplish. And I wanna get back to assignments here. So uh, we've got the reading. Uh, the next step here is the discussion board. So uh, this week's discussion is about what is your personal presentation history? What experience have you had with doing presentations? So uh, for each assignment, the instructions are a downloadable PDF. That's this one right here. I want everybody to download this and read through the instructions. Uh, and it's right here. It takes you through it. And essentially, we want everyone to make what we're calling an initial post. If we go to the discussion board, um, there's a discussion box at the beginning, at the top. And if you put your, your post in there, then that becomes a post attached to your name. I, you know, I started this off. We have some people that have started to actually engage here already. So, Sean has put his post in at the top, and that becomes his initial post that we're asking for that's attached to his name. And then we have Remington who replied to that. So you guys all have to make one initial post that's due on Wednesday, and you have to make two replies to different classmates that's due by the end of the week. Now, we're asking you to get your initial post in on Wednesday to give everybody time to come back and read what everybody else has written. So we'd like you to engage each other, to read what each other has written, and we want you to engage with responses that are substantial, that, in, that talk about what they're doing. You know, uh, we don't want you just to write, hey, good reply, attaboy, you know, nice doing. We want you to talk about what they're doing. Now, what are the, some of the things that we're gonna talk about in our initial post? Well, if you come back to the instructions here, you'll see a variety of prompts. You do not have to answer all these questions. You do not have to answer any of these questions. These are suggestions for things that you could talk about. But I want you to engage and tell me, what is your personal history? Have you made presentations before? Did you have a good experience or a bad experience? If you had a good experience, tell us about that. If you had a bad experience uh, and it, it traumatized you, you know, tell us about that. Are you fearful of speaking in public? I'm not gonna let you out. Of, of doing it, but if we wanna talk about it, we can get through our fears that way. Are you interested in software beyond PowerPoint? There's a lot of different great tools that you can use to make presentations. So are you interested in learning these things? These are some of the things you might wanna talk about. Uh, are, are there other programs that you're interested in using? Um, are you interested in learning how to make better slides or, or, or just to get better at speaking in public? Uh, tell me what you're looking to get out of this class. That will then help me as I'm working with each of you this month uh, know how to, uh, to do that uh, or, or what, what to engage in. But again, your initial post, uh, we're looking for what we're calling substantial. So uh, I don't have word counts for you. I don't have anything specific. Uh, but let's call it two or three paragraphs. You know, one, one paragraph is a little bit slight. Uh, this is an entire assignment. 
uh, a significant remembrance by you. Uh, I know some of you have trouble writing. Some of you like to write. Uh, you, there's no limit. You can write as much as you like. Uh, but in, in terms of writing too little, that's too little. That would be acceptable, but cheap. That's a good target right there. Two or three paragraphs. So uh, if you want to say more, say all you need to say. Uh, and again, uh, we're using language fit for colleagues and we're being collegial with each other. And as you reply, your replies can be based on what they've written. If they write about software and you're familiar with it, you can engage on that regard. Uh, if they talk about their fears and you had similar fears, you can talk about those things. But I want you to engage with your classmates. Uh, the replies are due by Sunday. The initial post is due on, mon on Wednesday. Uh, and if you miss Wednesday night, that's a, that's, a, that's a very soft deadline. You can get in on Thursday. There won't be any point deductions or anything like that. We are going to be practicing forgiveness this month. We know it's month one. So uh, while Full Sail is a stickler for, de for deadlines, and we want to get you into the habit of being good, precise people, we are fully aware that this is month one, and uh, it takes a while to build habits. They say it takes at least six weeks, six to eight weeks to build a habit. And so our class is only four weeks long. You're never going to be able to build steady habits within this one month. So we know that you're going to have good intentions and something's going to go wrong. Um, if you miss an assignment or you need extra time, we're going to give you time. We're not going to penalize people heavily this month. Uh, the one thing I do ask is that you be proactive, meaning that if you know you're going to miss a deadline, tell me ahead of time and I will make the extension happily. Telling me after the fact sounds like an excuse. Telling me ahead of time means that you're managing your time and you know realizing that you don't have enough and coming up short. So I prefer that you tell me before when you need an extension, but I, I will be granting it to those that need it. So that brings us to the main assignment. It's called Professional Presentation Analysis. And uh, here we want you to go to the TED website. If you've never heard of TED, TED stands for Technology, Education, and Design. They are a company that's been putting on pres uh, conferences around the world for a dozen years or more. And instead of having one main speaker who speaks for 90 minutes or so, uh, they they have two or three day conferences and they have like 20 or 30 speakers who all speak in short bits. None of these presentations are longer than 20 minutes long. They're, most of them are six to 20 minutes long. So uh, every one of them got videotaped. They've been doing it for several years and that means they have over 3,400 TED Talks that are available on this website. And so our job is we want you to, to just jump in here and watch a bunch of them. And uh, if we look at the instructions, professional analysis, and again, you will download that right here. The one that says rubric is a, uh, a chart that tells you how we grade. Uh, I wouldn't suggest downloading that and looking at it ahead of time. Uh, only if you don't understand the grade you get afterwards what I would recommend that you go and look at it. But uh, basically, uh, this rubric is a contract that all of us teachers, there are several of us teachers who teach creative presentation. And uh, it would be unfair if one person gave everybody all A's and another person gave everybody all C's. So we follow a common rubric or set of rules for how we do grading. And this is that set of rules. We, we absolutely publish it. So if you're curious about how you got your grade, that's where you can find it. But there's no need to really read it ahead of time. Uh, and I think most of you are gonna be satisfied with your grades. So uh, if you never read the rubric, you're probably a happy man. Anyway, I want you to download the instructions and read those. And the instructions are gonna ask you, research and watch a minimum of three different TED Talks to answer the question, what makes a presentation effective creative, captivating, and inspiring. All right, so essentially, I want you to write reviews of three different TED Talks. Now, 
I don't want you to be the lazy guy that just picks three TED Talks and doesn't look at any more. I want you to be the really engaged person who goes and looks at this as an opportunity to, to get pleasantly lost down the rabbit hole because there are 3,400 really fantastic presentations here. And we built into your time to do this assignment six or eight hours of, of watching TED Talks. So have at it, please, people. Watch 20 or 30. It's like eating popcorn. You can't go wrong. Pick any one. Uh, now, are they all great? No. But for the most part, they're really interesting. Uh, there are different ways, there are different search tools that you can use to go through here. So if you're only interested in your subject, if you only want to know about women who create video games, you know, you can find talks about that. But what I really want you to do is maybe go outside your field. Just look around for serendipity, you know, interesting, odd uh, topics. You know, the very first one here has got, my, got me intrigued. When is the pandemic over? That's uh, pretty topical, probably. So... Uh, all throughout here, you're going to find amazing presentations and amazing presenters. And presenters is the uh, important word because when we ask you to write a review, we are not asking you to review the TED Talk. We don't want you to tell me was it a good talk or not. We want you to review the presenter. Did the presenter do his or her job well? And that's the reason why we want you to get the the Nancy Duarte reading done ahead of time. Because if you read those five chapters, you will then be thus armed with a vocabulary to be able to speak about how well the presenter did his or her job. So we want you to write reviews of each of these presentations, individual reviews, paragraph reviews, that tell me how well each presenter did his or her job. Now here's a series of prompts. I don't want you to just type these prompts in and answer them. That's a, that's a lazy way to do a review. You can, you can read these as options for things to talk about. You don't have to talk about everything here, but you may find the thing that gets you into the material. But I want you to write two or three paragraph reviews of each of these TED Talks. So three different reviews, two or three paragraphs each. This is a writing assignment. I don't need multimedia. I don't need you to use PowerPoint. I won't, I won't disallow you to use PowerPoint, but it's an awful tool to, you, to do a writing job on because you just gotta put a lot of text on PowerPoint. It never really looks good. So, so wait, where do we write the review? Well, you guys have all been given a full copy of Office 365 from, uh, from uh, Microsoft. As new students, this is not something that Full Sail does so much as Microsoft does. That be, by virtue of having a fullsail.edu school address, they're gonna give you a four year license to the latest version of Office 365. It comes with one terabyte of online storage, online access to the tools, and the ability to download uh, the local or the desktop version for on any two devices that you have. And Office 365 is available for Windows, for Mac, for Android devices, and iOS devices. So you can download it on whatever device you have now, and then four months from now when you get a, a, a laptop from Full Sail, you can put the Mac or PC version um, there as well. And the really cool thing is that they give you four-year access to it, and you're gonna get through school in way more than four years, so you're gonna have access to this latest, greatest version of Office for several uh, months or years after you graduate. And Office includes Outlook, which you're gonna use for email, PowerPoint, which we've been talking about, and Word. So you're gonna get the very latest version of Word, and we would like you to write these reviews in Word. So uh, look at as many, power, uh, as many TED Talks as you can st stand, pick the three you wanna talk about, you don't have to pick the three best. Just pick the three that are interesting because you're looking at the presenter, not necessarily the topic. And, and if you find one that you don't like, that's even better because then you can tell me what they did wrong and not what they did right. But if I go back to the instructions, two or three paragraphs on each different talk, and then step three, conclude your assignment 
with a list. This is one list of 10 qualities that all three presentations contain. And this is absolutely going to come straight out of the reading. If you've done the reading this for the week, you'll know what these qualities are. And this is comparing the talks together. So it may be that only two of them qualify. That's fine. You can still put them together in the list. But it's things like, did they use their hands? Or did they use humor? Or did they dress the audience? Or did they use props? You're going to find this in the reading. These are different things that presenters do. And, I, and, and as you look at the three talks that you chose, just put together a list and then point out where in the TED Talks that occurred. So that's going to be the writing. Three reviews, a final list of 10 qualities with annotations on it. And then I skip step two. Step two is uh, um, the, the fun part, but a little more complicated. Create a document for this assignment and include supporting imagery. I want you to add photos or images, graphics, to this written assignment. And I'm going to show you examples here. And there's no set rule for how many or how uh, uh, how many graphics or images to use, but the point is that each image you choose needs to help me understand what you've written. So you're not picking images to be pretty, you're picking images to help communicate. What images will help me understand what you've written better? And I wanna give you some examples here. I have lots of examples that previous students have done, and I'm very, very happy to share these examples with anybody. So uh, anybody that wants to borrow, to get an example, just get a hold of me. But uh, you can see in these reviews, I want you to tell me who the presenter is, the name of the talk. So you need to identify both of these things in your review, the name of the presenter and the talk. And you may have to tell me a little bit about what the talk is about, but I don't want you to focus in on the topic, but on the presenter themselves. What did the presenter do right? What did they do wrong? How did you like him? Did you think they did a good job, et cetera? So you are reviewing the presenter and you're doing each of these in three separate reviews. And then at the end, you're going to give me a list of 10 qualities, connection, knowledge, emotion, ebbs and flows, you know, all these different things. This person took these items from the reading on Nancy Duarte. So, you can turn this in as a Word doc or a PDF. And you can use as many or as few photos as you like. Again, there are no rules about these photos. Most of these photos are gonna come as screen captures from the TED Talk website. Now, the one rule about the images that I do wanna give you is that we want to acknowledge where they came from. Because we're using other people's images, uh, later on, you're going to find that there are citation requirements that the school has for official stuff, blah, blah, blah. We're not following those rules this first month. We don't want to put that heavy an onus on you. But we do want to make sure that if we're using images that came from somewhere, we acknowledge where they came from. So when you put uh, an image on, just tell me where it came from. Like here, this is a screen capture from the video. It just says from the TED.com. That's all I'm looking for. And you don't even have to do it per picture. You can do it all at the end. If you want, you're gonna collect them together. But this person has lots of images here. Each image helps me better understand what this talk is. And certainly if they came from the video themselves, you know, uh, you, you'll know that they're probably relevant. You can do Google searches. Uh, and if you found something from Google search, Crediting, crediting to Google is just as good. You don't have to say, you know, which specific website it came from. If you took it from a Google search, then just say that. Uh, but uh, the images, I'm going to judge on how well they relate to, to helping me understand what you're saying. And there's an important point here, because this text is akin to the narrative of a, a presentation that you're telling me. And the images are like the slides that go with them. They help me to understand. Slides in a presentation amplify and help the narrative. They do not carry the story all by themselves. So in this case, you know, uh, you use as many as few as you like. 
Uh, you're not going to uh, get a really fantastic gray by, by putting 100 images in here. But the images you choose need to be uh, images that are helpful to understanding what's going on. And your list of 10 qualities uh, needs to have reference to, to some of the stuff that you was happening in the reviews. And so uh, I have an awful lot of great examples here from previous students who've done this. And instead of giving everybody the same examples, uh, I'm gonna give everybody different examples. So you have to write in to me with a request for the examples. And the reason for that is thus. The rule is if I give you an example, then whatever three TED Talks that person wrote about can't be in your review. And I don't wanna lock any particular talks off from everybody. So I'm gonna give different people different reviews. But whatever reviews I sent you, you cannot use the same talks that are in those reviews. Uh, and, and in that regard, then I'm happy to share any previous students' TED Talk reviews with you. But having a sample will be really helpful in knowing you know, uh, a lot of, about what I'm looking for and how to format this stuff and so forth. Uh, there are no rules for how to format. You can use Word. Uh, again, I like, I like PDFs because they, uh, they hold their shape pretty easily. And when you're ready to turn in your homework, you will find on every assignment page this little box completion. So if you're on a Mac or a PC and you create a Word or a doc file and you have an actual file, you can drag that file here and it will upload to the full sale. Now, since so many people are now doing their work on phones, it works slightly different. Your phones don't really store files on them. When we give you um, these, when we give you these Office 365 accounts, you have what's called cloud storage. And so when you write a paper using cloud storage, your, your paper is gonna be stored on the cloud and you will share it. And so that presents a, a URL or a link. So that's not a file that you can upload or, or drag on this box. If you're on a mobile device, the way you'll turn in your homework is that you'll send me that link and you can do it in the feedback box here or uh, you can send it to me by email or text it to me or whatnot. But as long as you send me the link to where I can see it on your Office 365 account, I can see that. But it's gonna be important if you're working in that regard to make sure you have the share settings set up so that I can view your work. You know, uh, your own personal web, uh, uh, your own personal cloud stuff is usually private until you set it to share. So if you want me to see your homework on the cloud, you have to make sure you change those share settings and send me that link. And that's usually uh, pretty automatic. It's pretty easy to use, uh, pretty easy to figure out. So uh, that's all I've got. I know I've been talking an awful long time. I've been some questions in here. Um, anybody have any questions? You can just shout them out to me, or you can write them in the chat box. Uh, but if you're uh, if if you're uh, having a question, if something was unclear, I'd like to answer as many questions as I can right now before I leave. Um, do the class books have an audio book? Uh, no. Um, I believe that Resonate is in the audio uh, books.com thing. So if you're part of Spotify or one of those places that, it, that are, are part of those uh, shared audio books, uh, resonates in there, uh, but and there are also tools within uh, uh, Macs and PCs to to allow text to speech to have it read to you. But there are no official audio books for these books, and I wish we had better better ways to get you these books. But uh, they are pretty good reading, but it's going to be you know difficult access. Any more questions? Uh, so this assignment is, is due at the end of the week. Yes, 1.4 is due Sunday night at midnight. So the way this works is that we're all in different time zones. Uh, when I give you a time, it's Eastern time zone. So when I say it's due Sunday night at midnight, 
that means that it's due in the central time zone at 11 o'clock. It's due in the mountain time zone at 10 o'clock and it's due in the Pacific time zone at nine o'clock. So uh, your, your, um, your deadline here, if you set your time, uh, your, set your preferences on your, your uh, FSO site will be correct. But when I say midnight, I mean midnight in Florida and then that simultaneous time in whatever time zone you're in. And what happens at midnight is that it, it locks up and won't accept assignments anymore. I can unlock it and I can accept assignments late, but uh, you will experience that lockup that happens at midnight if you don't hit the deadline. To get an example of the assignment, we just need, uh, I just need to message me. So uh, the messaging is, is all here. And you can send me email, you can send me a text, you can, you can get a hold of me on the, uh, the Discord site. Uh, Any way you get a hold of me, I will try to send you um, um, a file back. I've been I found it easy to send files back through the messaging system. It's less easy through Discord. So if you ask me on Discord, I may have to send it to you somewhere else. The easiest way is just to do a feedback message here. You know, you just type in here, say, please send me a message, uh, an example, and I can attach it and send it straight back to you. Uh, but I have great examples for anybody that wants to ask. Can we work ahead? Um, well, if you've got a reason to, and we, we end up having some people in the Army who have maneuvers and, and uh, other, it, you know, interpersonal issues or whatnot, we can let you get ahead. But uh, I don't want to open up everything. Uh, it, does, it isn't helpful for you to try to do all of it ahead of time. But if you get the reading, you want to get ahead, you know, all you need to do is ask me and I will privately open up uh, uh, the, the following week or two for somebody who needs it. So again, uh, no good asking me examples in the chat box. That, this chat box is gonna disappear when I shut down, but go to the Full Sail website, go to the text box. Uh, I, you know, I get an awful lot of question, uh, requests as soon as this is over and that's fine. I'll fill them all, but I can't, can't remember what's happened in chat once I close this down. And uh, once I close this down, it takes me about an hour to process the video and then it's gonna be back exactly where it was that you signed up. So 1.1 Zoom sign up lecture. If you scroll down, it says Zoom recordings. In about an hour, this entire lecture will be here and you can watch it through the rest of the week if you need to come back and review everything. All right, anything else? Any more questions? All right, I'm gonna let you guys go. Uh, thanks for hanging out. It was, uh, you know, you guys were, were, were uh, smart and, and attentive and I'm, I'm happy with that. So I think we're gonna have fun this week. I think we're gonna have a lot of fun this month. This is, these are creative assignments and I really look forward to seeing what you guys can do with them because, you know, it's really, up to you to make these things come alive and uh, express yourselves. And I get to know who you are from that. So thanks a lot and welcome aboard. Welcome to Full Sail. Good night, everybody. Mm -hmm.